I was a second lieutenant in the Army in Vietnam in 1967. And in 1968, um, leading a combat patrol, I was with the 4th Division. I stepped on a bouncing Betty early in the morning at 7.45, and it flew up out of the ground and exploded uh, waist high. I was flying through the air, and I threw my arms like, like this, and there was nothing but a white, jagged bone here. And I could see both bones on my wrist to the elbow. So from here forward, it looked pretty good, but there was a big gap. It was all that had been vaporized in the explosion. So he laid that across my stomach and this hand, which I could no longer control, he laid it across my stomach and I didn't know that from the waist down, I'd also lost a lot of, I've been severely wounded. The VA Research and Development told me about this arm and that uh, DARPA was funding it, DECA had made it, and they wanted the VA to be interested in it. And since I was the National Director of Prosthetics, they came to me and they, um, convinced me that I should, I should be one of the clinical trial subjects. It became very evident very quickly that this was going to be a huge benefit for Fred and because of the ease in learning how to use it, he became very proficient at it very quickly. And I think because of that, it changed his whole mindset about advanced technology and what it could do for people that were missing their hands been very skeptical of uh, you know new inventions and how much they're going to make your life better but uh, I came up here to, to DARPA working with the VA and um, they fit me with my first uh, Luke arm and for the first time in 47 years uh, after a few hours of learning how to use it I was able to drink using my left arm which was uh, just phenomena for me brought tears to my eyes. The, the crucial part of wearing an upper extremity prosthetic, actually any prosthetic, is the fitting process. The whole process of making sure the socket fits, the harnessing, which is very, very crucial to a, a good fit, how to put that harness on me to carry all of that weight, and the, the interrelationship, which has got to be, the chemistry between your prosthetist and yourself has got to be just right so that you feel like you're being treated as a human being and not just a product. And immediately, that's the uh, Albuquerque and his crew, they made you feel welcome, uh, concerned about me as a patient. And since this was so crucial, this fitting with this type of arm, which was unique and new, why that relationship between uh, Next Step and myself was, was crucial to my success in wearing this. Being somebody that's a prosthetist, that provides limbs for somebody that needs them, there's a real personal relationship that a lot of time comes out of that. You know, we're re we are replacing parts of people's bodies. And to do that without knowing the person and developing a sense of trust and respect I don't know how it gets done without that. They devised a harness that distributed the weight of the arm across and around the back of my body, so it was comfortable. And it reminded me of a backpack. In the military, we'd carry tons of weight, pounds, 70, 80 pounds of weight in our, in our back, in our rucksacks. And it was the harnessing system that enabled us to do this, because it spread the, the weight over our, our torso. So the same concept in my mind is what they've done with this socket and harnessing is to enable me to, look, I can move all around like this, up and down, and, and uh, just doing that with a little stump, that's all I got left. When you look at what we've been able to do for Fred, and when he talks about feeling normal, and being dignified, and being able to dress himself, and be able to do things independently, I don't know if we can do that for everybody in the world, but I do know the people that we should be doing it for is our nation's military, who have gone out and signed on the bottom line and through no fault of their own are now missing parts of their body. We have the technology to replace that. What's going to be very, very important is we find the same experts to fit this technology that we did in terms of building the technology. Because the human body is fluid, to take a, a, your, your, your stump or whatever's left of your, your leg or your arm 
and to mold it properly to get the right socket fitting. That's a real artistic thing that has to be done. In the prosthetic world, there are, there are some prosthetists who, who are artists, and that's going to be the type of individual that needs to be working with this, this type of a product. You're not going to be able to mass produce um, prosthetic arms with sockets uh, with this type of device because of the intricacy of the control system, the harnessing, everything has to be just right. And any, any arm amputee will tell you on the harnessing and the socket, just a little bit of difference will make all the difference in the world. So the value of what data comes out of the Walter Reed study will help future generation of prosthetists and others know what they need to do to improve that prescription process. There's what I think of this arm. Thumbs up.